first half hour. The Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, who was proven beyond a reasonable doubt wrong on at least two occasions in that first segment. And there might be three. I'd have to go back and review the tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, Will not, that be a worthy endeavor? Yeah. Well, what, some yeah. would say. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd use the word wrong. Gross, mis- grossly mis- inaccurate? Mis- would you prefer grossly mis- inaccurate? Mis- mistaken or temporarily confused or something like that. <laughs> All right. I'll sit along grossly inaccurate, too. Also, the Sarge, Michael Height. Welcome back. Good morning. It's good to be right. <laughs> I, I believe your sentence once, uh, your statement in the in the break was, I thought I was wrong once. I thought I was wrong no, once, but I, I, I was, was mistaken. mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> I was mistaken about that. Uh, Larry Schultz in studio as well, Sir Lawrence. Great to be here. Uh, and uh, Ken Matson in, in the Mike Carl chair, Kenneth. Good morning, everyone. And via telephone in the Joe Ferretti telephone seat, David Valente. D-Dub, good hey, morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? What's up? How y'all doing? Good to have you with us via the telephone. Yeah. All right. Uh, we uh, we're I, because Freddie's not here. He's usually the the, the leadoff uh, hitter. So David, you assume the leadoff hitter's chair, and therefore you are oh, the leadoff right. hitter. Oh. Yeah. I am the leadoff hitter. So um, uh, we hear a lot um, about you know the the flavor of the week when it comes to the Republican primary. You know now it seems to be Nikki Haley. Um, uh, you know, different candidates emerge as this this rival to Trump, um, and we keep hearing that you know eventually the the candidate you know that the, there's going to be a serious challenger to Trump. Um, it, to me, it reminds me of 2016 when I kept hearing the Bernie Bros tell me that Bernie was going to win the nomination when you saw clearly. That, that Hillary had pretty much wrapped up the the super delegates before even a vote was cast. I mean, probably the summer before, most uh, of the super delegates had committed to to Hillary, and there really was no path forward for Bernie to win the nomination outside of winning almost every uh, uh, voting delegate. And uh, to, I guess my question here is. Are Republicans who believe that someone's going to overtake Trump, just like the the Bernie Bros, in thinking that that someone that, that someone from the field is going to coalesce enough support to overtake Trump? All right. So this is the question to be answered. We're going to start first with you, Bill. Yeah, you mentioned uh, 2016. Uh, one of the things that came out of that was changing the way the superdelegates were chosen. They have less influence today than they had in 2016. But going back to the premise of your question, uh, David, uh, and we talked about this a little bit off air as well, uh, my sense is if anybody does overtake Trump, it's got to be done uh uh, before Super Tuesday, uh, and I think the two opportunities that present itself for a uh, someone other than Trump would be in New Hampshire and South Carolina. Uh, Nikki Haley is a strong second in New Hampshire. New Hampshire also has a lot of independent voters, uh, and I believe in New Hampshire even the Democrats can vote uh, in the primary. I'm not 100% certain of that, but th- there's a lot of independents. Uh, if uh, And South Carolina is a home state. But for this to happen, someone has to drop out, and that someone, I think, is Chris Christie. If Chris Christie dropped out, the number of votes that he ha- he's Karen in South in uh, New Hampshire would be enough to make uh, Haley's number quite competitive with Trump, and Christie's voters will invariably, I think, go for Haley. Now, Ramasamy and uh, DeSantis votes, it's questionable. I don't think many of those would go to Haley. They would probably go to Trump, but Chris Christie's votes would be a key vote. So I'm going to be curious to see what happens in the very near future uh, with what Christie does, the number of votes that Haley has. Is she competitive in South Carolina and New Hampshire? If, if not, then I think by Super Tuesday, it is over. It's going to be Trump. Larry? Yeah, there's a, a bit of a difference between this and Bernie in 16. Uh, Bernie wasn't indicted on 91 felonies on the run-up uh, to the choices. <laughs> the slight, and, very slight distinction. <laughs> yeah, it's a, and there weren't people in various states, as there are now, who are saying under the 14th Amendment, uh, paragraph 3, I think it is, um, you can't run for president if you're an insurrectionist. 
and there are active cases in several states right now to keep Trump off the ballot completely um, because they say the 14th Amendment says he can't be on the ballot. He can't run for president. As these cases and the criminal case and the civil fraud case and the other stuff uh, works its way through, I think there could be a deal where Trump is way ahead in February and all of a sudden in May, he's barely alive, uh, barely moving forward because now he's making arguments to stay out of prison from his sentencing. Um, I don't know if it'll happen that quickly, but yeah, there's a, a, a chance. And, and to give credit to David's question, I think without that, we are looking at the same kind of thing. Um, the, and that Trump will probably roll through. Uh, but uh, with that stuff, he may be the choice of, of the Republican voters, but that choice may get invalidated because of his conduct. Mr. Matson. Well, the 16 wasn't without its own controversy in the Democratic uh, caucus. So there was a big infighting going between Bernie and Hillary. Mm -hmm. And there was Wasserman Schultz, little puppet playing with some some votes now in, in there so um with this will you have the same some people were talking about ted cruz and and donald trump too during the 16. so i mean it really comes down to when you watch the the last presidential debate the only how do you do how do you say i am better than the other guy um when you don't say what difference differentiates yourself between them the only attack dog there was Chris Christie. We already know that. So how did the other three say, yeah, tr well, did they say Trump was great, man, he's, he's golden, but then why do you want to run against him? So he's, he's 60%. You guys are well below him. So what are you doing to say, yes, I can take the job from this person who I say is the best president that we've had. So none of them are doing that. So what are you doing? So, so my question, well, not my question, but the answer is um, you have to make a, a choice between the Republican voters. Why should I go for you, Nikki Haley? Why should I go for you, DeSantis? Why should I go Viv Vivek or Chris Christie? And uh, to me, they're all just sitting backbench. They're just, what I think Larry is, they're waiting to see if there's a slip up or there's an indictment to where Trump has to, if he does, step down and they move in on that. So, or it goes long enough where the courts, where it goes to the, to, to the primary caucus, you know, the, the, the overall um, voting for the super delegates that enough delegates go, I uh, know we're going to nominate Nikki Haley like they did with Hillary. They're all trying to survive financially long enough to make it to a court decision possibly. Mr. Height. Yeah, I, we did discuss this a little bit off air, and, and we were had some d disagreement uh, of our thoughts here. That that my my contention is that those individuals who are not voting for Trump right now, who are backing one of those other four, um, if their candidate drops out, I think they fall in behind one of the other three. I don't think they're those are Trump voters. Now, you know, Bill says that he thinks Ramaswamy's. Um, voters would be Trump supporters if Ramaswamy were to, to bow out. Uh, I'm thinking these people are anybody but Trump type uh, individuals and that if Ramaswamy would, would bow out or, or, you know, not do well in, in Iowa or New Hampshire and, and not have the money to go forward, that those voters would get behind somebody else. And I, I see... I agree with, with what Ken's saying, too, is you sort of have to hold on right now uh, until you can get to Super Tuesday um, because a lot of things can happen between now and then. You you don't have to win Iowa. You don't have to win New Hampshire. You have to have a good showing to get forward through to Super Tuesday. Um, Biden didn't win either one of those either. But once he got to Super Tuesday and, and won on Super Tuesday, that made a huge difference. I think Nikki Haley is the one who could be the front runner. If she gets to Super Tuesday, she has to win South Carolina. If you don't win your own state, you're dead. 
But if she can hold on to Super Tuesday and win South Carolina, and then you know some of the things that that Larry alludes to, you know Trump could get into some some uh, fire or excuse me um, legal trouble to where his voters think he doesn't have a path forward, and and this just isn't a viable candidate anymore. My vote would be wasted. And you could see more and more people sort of slip away from Trump. And I think that's really the only path forward for any one of these four. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say three or maybe even two, because I really don't think Chris Christie or Ramaswamy stand a chance. Uh, I think it's really if somebody's going to defeat defeat Trump, it, it's either going to be Nikki Haley or, or DeSantis. It's disappointing to Bill because he just got Ramaswamy's name down last week. He, <laughs> he drops out. He yeah. wasted a whole year of practice. Rolling right off his tongue. Yeah, I've been working on it for weeks now. Let me go back to a point that Larry said about the uh, uh, Trump being prohibited from even being on the ballot. I think you're referring to the argument, the 14th Amendment argument. Uh, Colorado recently, Supreme Court said they would, they could, that could not keep them off the ballot. Uh, I believe uh, Michigan, I think I'm right with Michigan, uh, also said the same thing. So there's though there's something like three or four states that that was becoming an issue of at least two of them. Supreme Court has waited and said it you cannot be kept off the ballot. But, but I think this is a federal constitutional issue, and therefore this case, even though it might have. Uh, begun in the state courts is going to end up before the arbiters of the United States Constitution, okay. the nine justices in D.C. Now, was that, don't, don't, don't the states then. themselves control who's on their ballot and who's not on their ballot? It's the states. It, That's the, a the part of the have, argument here. Right, That's, the feds have no control over that. Yeah, there's a federalism kind of issue. Except, they have no control over that, except when there's a, I would think, when there's a constitutional provision that says, you can't do it now. Was it the prim- now, oh, they couldn't put they couldn't put somebody on the ballot who's otherwise um, not uh, approved. If you were not born in the United States, I think, for example, even though you're a citizen now, I don't think you can run for president. And I, I may be wrong about that, but there are some other provisions as well that m- make some people not eligible. And if that's the case, uh, then we got to decide are we going to enforce those provisions or not. Um, now, was that uh, judgment based on the primary ballot, which the parties vote to for who their uh, nominee is, or the general election ballot? I'm not sure, though. The, the primary hasn't occurred yet, so I would think it would be the primary ballot. Um, I don't know, though, because the parties do control that. And part of what might be said is, look, they can nominate whoever they want. But if the person is not qualified to run for the presidency of the United States. But I think that's on. what these state Supreme Courts are saying, that he is eligible, that we are finding in the state Supreme Court, according to the state of Michigan or whatever, that he, he is not guilty of insurrection and therefore he can be put on the ballot. No. He, they, that, they did not go that far, at least in Colorado. They did not say he was not guilty of insurrection. They just said that they did not think it, uh, there was conditions to apply to a to to a president, ex-president in this case. So, I mean, if you're waiting for a court case, I think in this in this case, as close as we are getting to the primaries, you you're going to have a bad time. The, the The problem here is that by the time we get any decisions on court cases, even if Donald Trump is, is arguing in the midst of these cases and it looks bad, we, we know his supporters are, are fairly loyal, um, and they're going to turn out to vote for him, even you know, as a, you know, a middle finger to the rest of, of the United States just to say I'm, I'm still supporting Trump. Um, the, the fact that you don't have a singular candidate – that is other than Chris Christie that is willing to take on Donald Trump. Even Nikki Haley has been muted in her opposition to, to Trump. Um, they, they need Chris Christie in, in the race right now because he's the guy that that says the things that they can't say. And as soon as he drops out, they're either going to have to say it or they're just going to have to take their lumps and, and uh, take the L when it comes to, to the primary. Um, but I, I don't. I I really don't think it matters. And as far as Ramaswamy goes, I think Ramaswamy is just a. He's the hedge. So if something does happen to Trump, um, whether it's you know going to jail or 
gets hit by a bus or whatever, he's the hedge. So, you know, they have a place to go if if they don't, you know, if Trump somehow does not get the, the, the nomination. Um, but, you know, May's too late. And I, I think at this point, until you have a single coalesced candidate that, uh, can go up against Trump and is not afraid to take him on. Um, and I don't think Chris Christie is going to have enough support to, to be able to carry the, the Republican Party. But until one of these other candidates have have the, the guts to really take Trump on on policy and and uh, show an alternate path forward for the Republican Party, there really is no chance that the Republican Party is going to pick anyone other than Donald Trump. Um, because I think you're right. If Haley can't win South Carolina. Um, she's she's not going to be the nominee. If if uh, no one can clear the field before Super Tuesday, um, there's it's going to be Donald Trump. Just just on plurality alone, he'll win those states, and by that time, it's over. There's there's no coming back from that for any other candidate because uh, there just are not enough delegates out there. The only thing that can save the Republican Party is if he gets if he gets convicted um, before the convention and the Republican Party um, says, frees the delegates um, and, uh, and opens the delegates. But even then, the delegates that are nominated to go to the convention could still pick Donald Trump. So I don't know that it really matters. Um, the Trump voters have proven to be very loyal. Even though they're a shrinking number, they're not shrinking fast enough for the Republican Party. Your point you made earlier about Christie remaining in the race was just to be the Republican bad guy to take on Trump was a point that we were talking about during the commercial break uh, leading up to this half hour, too. And my statement was the longer Christie stays in the race, the better it is for Nikki Haley because Christie fulfills the role of bashing Trump, which the others really don't want to do. <clears throat> so if, if he does leave, it makes it interesting as to who would step up to that role or would they all just kind of be submissive? Well, there's nobody going to get in the race now. No new person's going to get in the race, so some of them have to step up. Yeah. But, yeah, your point's well made about uh, Christie being the vocal uh, individual against Trump, but still it comes down to numbers of voters. And and Haley does not have the number of voters uh, in the primary, in New Hampshire especially, uh, unless Chris Christie steps down. So what happens if, if Trump is the nominee – what happens to the 40 percent out there in the Republican Party who right now are supporting somebody else? How, what percentage of those folks vote in the general election for Trump? Because that really determines whether or not he wins certain states, which determines whether you win the election. Because you don't need the popular vote. You just need to win the right states. And that's why they say it comes down to a, uh, uh, something like 35 or 40 counties in the U.S. that mm -hmm. are true swing counties uh, that will determine the outcome of the election. And then what— what number of those just don't vote at all because they don't want any part of that election? And then on the same on the opposite side, on the Democratic side, there's not a lot of enthusiasm for Biden either in his own party. So what percentage of those people don't vote? Is this going to be the most passionate election ever or the most apathetic one ever? <laughs> I think the most apathetic. 